Hey everybody, this is Austin and welcome back to the channel. It has taken a long time to get to this point, but we are finally, finally here. So the Project Bear 2022 guitar build off is now over. The submissions are in and today you guys are going to get your first look at the people, the work people have done and you're going to get to vote on who gets to walk home with the prizes. Now, if you don't remember, back in January 1st, I announced this contest to see who could build the best version of my design. And since then, I've been following a lot of builds and a lot of people have done some amazing work, but not everybody actually made it to the finish line. So I believe there was about an eight or 10 builds going at one point and only four made it all the way through to the end with submitted work before the deadline. And so that's what we want to do today. So let's not waste any more time. I'm going to show you their work, give you some of my thoughts on each, and then we're going to go ahead and vote on who gets to walk home with the prizes. Let's take a look at number one. All right, so the first one comes from Manit, who's a member of my Discord server, and he submitted this via email. And this is his build. Now, it looks like he built it out of a walnut body. We can see that here on the CNC. And here it is again on the CNC, cutting the front side. It looks like he built this on a print NC, which is pretty cool. Um, those are starting to become more popular, and they are a great design, great machine. I would love to build one at some point. Um, Man, I really love this wood. The wood is very straight grained, or not straight grained, but the grain is very uniform. Uh, it's a really nice piece. I thought it was a solid piece at first, but it's actually a two piece, which is interesting. Um, here's another shot cutting the back side. And here's the shot before everything was put together, assembled and finished. Again, really, really nice choice for the body. I love this, the wood you chose for this. It's great, it's beautiful. Here it is with a little bit of finish. It looks like it's a poly finish. I can't quite tell. He didn't he didn't put that in the list. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, man. I believe that's a wipe on poly, but if it's not, let me know in the comments. Uh, he made a paduke neck. Here you can see it cutting the headstock and the truss rod. And here's uh, some of the inlays, which will become a very big deal later on. You guys will see that. So here it is kind of in the pre-assembled state when everything's getting put together. It, that is just gorgeous. I love that. Uh, I actually really like the knobs. <laughs> a really nice choice in the knobs. I, I like those a lot. Okay, and here's where it gets really interesting, what really sets this guitar apart. Uh, sorry, one more thing. It is a zero coat fingerboard. Uh, I thought it was Wenge at first because it has a very similar grain, um, but it is a zero coat fingerboard. Okay, so the inlays are glow in the dark, which you guys will get to see here in a second. Here's kind of a pre-shot without the lighting. Uh, let's just skip to the glow in the dark real quick and we'll come back. So yeah, <laughs> pretty rad. Uh, that definitely makes this one stand out a lot. I love having the name there. Um, I don't think that's your name. I think that's maybe a brand that you, that you sell under or something like that. Uh, Beautiful, beautiful work. I, I think the side dots are actually maybe glow in the dark as well. They kind of looked like that in some of the other pictures, but and we'll go back a little bit. So here's the back side of the guitar. You can see the gorgeous walnut with the uh, Paduke neck. Uh, I guess my only criticism on the back side of this guitar is I do somewhat feel, and this is just subjective, that maybe there's a slight color mismatch between the neck and the body. Um, and maybe it's just the photo. Uh, I feel like the neck came out maybe slightly too red. I thought it was gonna be a little bit more orange and I think the orange might have uh, played nicer with the Wenge, or not the Wenge, the Walnut. But other than that, man, it, it is gorgeous. Everything came out really nice. Uh, yeah, and you did go with the bolt-on rather than the set neck, unlike what I did. I, I was too much of a wimp to go with the bolt-on because there was not very much material there, but you went with the bolt-on instead of the set neck. And yeah, man, that just looks amazing. Uh, it does look like he went with a, uh, drawing a blank, magnet, that's the word I'm looking for. It does look like he went with a, uh, a magnet cover plate, which is pretty cool. I think we get to see that a little bit more later. Here's a kind of a close up of that inlay. Very, very cool. Here it is kind of in the wild after it's been lit up, some of the light is still coming through. And actually, yeah, I don't think those are glow in the dark, those inlays. So I thought they were. 
Okay, yeah, so he did go with a hip shot uh, hardtail bridge, uh, hip shot tuners, and a Seymour Duncan sentient Nazgul humbuckers, and Jess card medium stainless steel frets, and a Stumac truss rod. Just kind of getting through the hardware there. Um, very, very nice setup. Very similar to what I did for my build, although he, he went with the uncovered humbuckers, and I went with the covered humbuckers on mine. Uh, but it looks, looks great. Yeah, here's a great shot of the finish. You can really see how well that was put together. Yes, yeah, so that's a great shot. Here's the uh, kind of the beauty shot of the whole guitar on the front. Um, amazing picture, by the way. I love the background, the setting on that. It's it's awesome. Uh, I guess the only other criticism I have, it's not really, again, not really a criticism. It's just a style choice. Um I think I would have preferred if I were doing this to have the nut be a Tusca nut because you've got all black hardware and the white kind of stands out as maybe a little bit out of place. Um, either way, that's so minimal. That's not a big deal at all. Um, that would just be my choice. I think I would have gone with a Tusk nut just to keep the, the color palette the same. Um, here's another shot a little bit closer up of the front here. Not exactly sure what's going on with these inlays. It looks like he might have had an original plan and then switched or some some kind of reference maybe that I'm not getting. But it looks really, really nice. Here's the backside picture of the control cavity. Looks like he went with a barrel jack and a three-way switch. Uh, I can't tell what pots he's using or what capacitor or anything like that. Doesn't really matter. Uh, beautiful, beautiful picture and great job uh, keeping everything pretty clean back here. That's nice. Well done. And then we have a small little video of him just kind of cutting the, the back of the control cavity. It's the only video he sent me, so I went ahead and threw it in here. Uh, but man, great, great work. That is a gorgeous guitar. Um, I would be thrilled if mine turned out just as good as that. I mean, Mine turned out pretty well, but in some ways yours is much, much um, more put together than mine. And so I, I think you did a phenomenal job, man. I really, really love this. It really stands out. The glow-in-the-dark inlays are amazing, and I love your wood choices. So great, great job, man. Thank you so much. And let's go ahead and look at number two. All right, so let's take a look at number two, which comes from Miku, who's also a member of my Discord. And he submitted this guy. Now, this guy is probably one of my favorites, although it's also plagued with the most flaws, which happens in a lot of builds. Um, but there's so much potential going on in this one that I really, really like. So I want to I want to highlight that. Um, so let's start off with this is a mahogany and poplar body. So it's a poplar drop top with a mahogany back. He's got all silver. <clears throat> he's got all silver hardware, white pickups. He's got a sycamore fretboard, which is an interesting choice with copper inlays, similar to how I did it, but I did Wenge instead of sycamore. Um, really, really nice. This gives a bit of a vintage slash rustic vibe, which I really like. Um, he also went with a maple neck, which we'll show more on the back. He was smart and went with the string trees, which I did not, and I still need to do that. Um, you heard nothing. <laughs> and... Uh, really really gorgeous color combinations i absolutely love it there are some problems with it which we'll talk about in a moment but i want to highlight the really good parts first um man this back this uh mahogany on the back turned out beautiful and i do know from talking to him on discord that he uh, took his first stab at french polishing for this build yes that's right he did a full and french polish on this entire thing which i gotta say man you did a great job this thing looks awesome um i really like the all silver hardware uh i like that you went with the bolt on again i was kind of too much of a wimp to do that but i think it turned out great and it really um ties all the rest of your hardware together which i like a lot uh, the maple neck looks fantastic uh, i'm curious what finish you used on the back of the neck since you went with the high gloss on the body I don't think you actually told me that, so let me know. Um, and then he went with Schaller auto locking uh, tuners. And speaking of which, I forgot to mention what he did for the hardware up here. So for the neck pickup, he went with a bare knuckle emeralds pickup. And on the bridge pickup, he went with a DiMarzio DP224WAT-1. 
Marzio, if you're if you're listening, you need to work on your names. <laughs> uh, Emerald is much easier to say than that. Um, he also went with a Babix FCH fix string six uh, six hardtail bridge in Chrome. Uh, looks really really nice. Now you will notice these little circles here. That is because he originally went with a baby grand style hip shot bridge, and that ended up not fitting. Um, with the height of the neck for him he ended up it just being way too high and he couldn't get the action low enough so he had to switch bridges at the last second <clears throat> which means he had to ditch the, the bridge holes and move to a hardtail bridge and so he did unfortunately have to fill these so sorry if i revealed that secret to you <laughs> but uh i think it still looks great i i mean it would annoy me as the builder to have that on there but since this is for yourself and you're not making it for a customer i think it's totally fine and it just reminds you of the the story there's there's things like that all over my guitar that uh i have i'm just saving little problems like in my um inlays where there's little gaps and things and i remember exactly how those got there and why i didn't fix them and i left them he also had one little issue. I think it was tear out on the CNC, which he ended up just filling with resin. Um, it actually adds kind of a nice little little touch. Um, it does look like a mistake, but at the same time, it still looks gorgeous, man. I love the color combinations here. I do think the one thing I would probably change in terms of color combinations is I think I wouldn't go with the white on the pickups. Uh, I think I would probably... I don't know. I would. I feel like if you just went with the full chrome, it would have looked a little bit nicer. Uh, but it still looks great, man. I love it. Let's uh, move on to the back. And yeah, here's a close up of the fretboard. Looks really, really nice. I love the sycamore. Here's a full shot from the side. I think there's a couple more here. Let's see. Let's look through these. Yeah, dude, that just looks so good. So good. You did a great job on the back of that body. I do think that the direction of the cavity cover uh, grain is a little off-putting. Um, I think it should have just, either you should have tried to exclude that part of the wood or maybe make sure that it was pointing in the direction of the rest of the grain. Not a big deal, um, just kind of stands out a little bit. Did a great job finishing the neck. That looks gorgeous. Yeah, and you can really, really see the high gloss on the on the finish there. Yeah, man, I got to say, other than the little issues that you saw that I pointed out, man, this thing turned out phenomenal. I love the color combinations. There's so much potential here. I do think it might have looked a little bit better if you went with all gold hardware instead of silver. I, the silver looks nice. Don't get me wrong. Um, I think there was a potential for gold here to make it look really, really nice, but fantastic job uh you definitely deserve to be in the um contending for the prizes i really really liked the work man thank you so much and let's move on to number all right and third we have dane who i believe i met on facebook originally but he's also been on my discord for a while and we have his submission which is really really interesting there's a lot of things going on here and i think maybe a little too much but that doesn't take away one bit from a lot of the craftsmanship in this build. So let's quickly take a look at that. So what we have here is we have a walnut body with a AAA Amboina Burl veneer inlaid into the body to appear like it's a drop top. Um, very, very cool technique. Uh, came out really nice. I like the little offset basically to the inside of the curvature rather than going to the outside like I did with my drop top came out really really nice um on the neck let me zoom out here and go to the neck we have a five piece laminate neck which is walnut and maple and man if this is how it looked coming straight off the cnc then you did a much better job than i did that's for sure um that looks phenomenal really really well done um here's a picture of that veneer getting inlaid into the body really cool technique um and then here it is right off of the CNC. So cool to see that kind of a technique. I've never seen it before, at least done in that way. So very nice. Um, here we go, here's the neck. And in the neck, uh, I already mentioned the five piece, but the fretboard is rosewood with ABS fret markers. 
And uh, he's got a multi-scale, which is interesting. So this is the first multi-scale neck that we've seen in this build, which is a 25.5 by 24.75 build, which is really interesting. Um, right here, it shows he has EMG pickups, but he actually later switched those out to um, Seymour Duncan ABH1 blackouts, which we'll see here in a second. So here it is with finish. Um, he's got some angled pickup plates. It doesn't look like he angled the... Actually, he did angle the... Now, I think my eyes are tricking me because of the neck. He didn't angle the pickups, but he did angle the pickup slot or pickup uh, covers, which is really interesting. He did a hip shot, uh, six string hardtail guitar bridge with an 11 degree tilt to compensate for the uh, multi scale. And yeah, here's a full picture of the finished back. That came out so nice. I could stare at that all day long. Um, and he's got a little battery cover here, the little, uh, it looks like he inlaid a little piece for the barrels, which is interesting. But man, that right there, that shot is a winning shot for me. I love that. However, let's talk about the things I, I'm not a huge fan of. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong, like the others, I love this design, so cool. But I feel like there's too much going on. So let me let me explain. If we, Strip away the body, which the body is immaculate. Um, what we have is we have pickups that aren't angled with an angled pickup plate. So it kind of tricks the eye and kind of a little unsettling. Um, and then we've also got the inlays, which are also at an angle in contrast to the, to the multi-scale frets, which is interesting. So you've got angles, different angles on the frets, different angles on the fret markers, different angles on the pickups and different angles on the pickup covers. And for me, that's just a little too, too much going on and causes a, causes a little bit of problems. So visually looks amazing, but it's like my eye doesn't know where to look. Um, there's no focal point of the guitar or anything like that, which maybe that's what he was going for. Um, that's the only real criticism I have, maybe other than the pickup, um, the knobs being maybe a little too close to each other. Other than that, phenomenal job, Dane. This looks absolutely incredible. Um, really, really solid work. Um, I loved everything about it, especially the inlay and the color choices and all that came out fantastic. And again, the back of the body is phenomenal. That's my favorite part of the entire thing. Even though the veneer is great, I love the way the back came together. So very cool um thank you dane very much for that submission that's phenomenal work uh there's a couple things i'd change but other than that it speaks for itself you did a great job man so let's move on to number four all right and if none of those suits your fancy we have number four which is arguably the most unique out of all of these but might be the most polarizing uh, i have a feeling this is going to People are going to fall in one camp or the other. They're either going to love this or they're going to hate this. Uh, I personally love it. I think there's a lot of creativity here. I do have some things I would definitely change if I was doing this myself. But let's take a look at this. So what really makes this guitar stand out is how scratch build it actually is. So he made his own hardware. So he made his own bridge and his own headless piece. So this is a headless uh, multi-scale neck. The laser cut MDF, so the entire neck and body are built out of MDF, which is an interesting material choice. And he did all his own inlays, he customized all of his own knobs, and so almost all of it, other than the electronics, is basically scratch built. Um, very, very cool. Um, I mean, the others are scratch built as well with the wood, but uh, this one kind of takes it to a different level. So we have this kind of grunge paint job. That's obviously the thing that stands out the most. Uh, it actually, my, when I showed it to my wife, it reminded her of the screen painting. Uh, you can see that on the screen here. Uh, very cool, very similar color palette. And so let's go through the specs real quick. Let's, uh, there's another shot. Let's look at the back. So we have a laser cut MDF uh, body and neck with a uh, cherry ply cavity cover. Um, it has an asymmetric neck profile, as you can see right here. The fretboard is rich light with ABS bindings. Uh, it has a 20 inch radius and the scale is a 24 fret, 25 to 25.5 multi-scale with a graph tech uh, nut. 
um, rune inlay on the 12th fret and jumbo stainless steel frets. The pickups are bare knuckle boot camp true grit pickups. And we've got a DiMarzio uh, barrel jack, a fender five weight toggle switch, and a one volume, one tone knob uh, wiring scheme. So yeah, here you go, here's the back. So one thing, this is probably the thing, don't get me wrong, I actually love the paint job. I think it's super unique. And in fact, the neck almost looks like copper that is oxidized or has been left in the ocean for a while. It's very cool. Um, what I don't like about this, I think, is it appears that there's all this added texture. And that makes that takes it for me from a stylistic choice to more of a potential caveat, right? So it's when I'm playing up and down the neck or I'm playing with the body, it's got a ton of added texture to it, which might make it uncomfortable. Maybe it's brilliant, but I think what I would have preferred to see is use the same paint job, but then clear coat the crap out of it and uh, level sand it, right? And then polish it up. So you still have that paint job underneath and you still get that gritty look, but you don't have all the added texture. It's still a smooth texture up and down the neck and up and down the body. Um, that's really my main, I think my main gripe with this. Let's take a closer look at this hardware that he made, which is really cool. So these are Onyx carbon fiber printed um, bridge. And he did this on the Mark Forged Onyx. I believe he did it at a print lab or at his work. You can kind of see here, it's in a lab. Um, and he machined his own brass, although he did buy the saddles. He was going to machine them himself, but he didn't have time. And then the headless piece is the same thing. It's a carbon fiber print, 3D printed um, headpiece with um, custom machine brass on it as well. So. Very cool to see not only the guitar, but also some of the hardware being custom built from scratch as well. And I think it came out really, really cool. Um, time will tell to see how it plays um, and how well it stays in tune and everything with being MDF and all that. But uh, I'm really looking forward to it. He seems to want to uh, make some videos showing how it sounds. He's gonna do a write-up on our Discord about the process. Um, there's not, it's kind of funny because with, with so much, let's call it intentionally wrong with the guitar, it's kind of hard to point out things other than that texture that I don't like about it because it was all intentional. Um, and that's very much a stylistic choice. So very, very cool work, very good job, uh, and very creative that, that you can give him for sure. So that is number four, and so what I wanted you guys to think about is which one of these do you guys think should take the first, the second, and the third place? So there's only going to be three prizes, so one of these four is going to miss out. <clears throat> one of these four is going to miss out on the prize. So let's jump back out of here, and let's talk about it. All right, well, that's all the submissions. So thank you very much to all the contestants who spent a lot of time and money investing in such a build like this. We got a huge variety of material choices, specs, designs, paint jobs, you name it. It was a wide variety of even stylistic choices. Uh, I could not be happier with the way everything turned out. So now we need to decide who's going to win, right? So as soon as this video is over, the polling system on the community tab of my channel will officially go live. And what you're going to see is you're going to see three polls, one for first place, one for second place, and one for third place. I want you to go vote on all three of those polls and decide who you think should get first, second, or third. Now I'm going to leave those polls up for two weeks because that's roughly how long it takes for most of my viewers to see my initial video launch. And then once that's done, I will go ahead and take those polls down and I will make another video announcing the winners officially. And then I will reach out to the winners and send you guys the prizes. So go vote. Let's decide who's gonna win this. So thank you very much. This is Austin signing out.